Hello, Joe Neville here. So I've got some eVPN content for you today. I've just been performing an eVPN config marathon that I was going to release as a single video, but it got so long I'm going to chop it up into two. So in this first video, we're going to be taking quite a bare bones config on an Aruba device and then configuring the layer two, the layer three, OSPF, and then static VXLAN to get familiar with the setup, the flood and learn, looking at the tables. Then we're going to strip that down and then we're going to configure a dynamic control plane for our Mac learning. Yes, eVPN. Um, so I'm going to be looking at L2 VNIs in this video. And then in the next video, we're going to be looking at integrated routing and bridging. I'm going to do asymmetrical and symmetrical. And I should say that this is really focused just on the configuration. I do talk about theory, but I don't go into real depth with it. I'll be looking at the details and really going deep into the theory in subsequent explainer videos. Okay, but I hope you find this useful and let's get on with the config. Here's the network we're going to configure. It's comprised of three Aruba 6300s, dash one, dash two, and dash three that are going to act as our V temps. Now these are physically connected to a layer two switch, but I'm going to configure the layer two and the layer three so that they set up this full mesh network. This will effectively be the underlay. And across that, we will advertise our loopbacks, this 192.168.0.1. Dot two and dot three, and the way that we will advertise them is with OSPF. So this is going to be an OSPF underlay here, and then connected to each one of the 6300s, emulating the customer side is a Linux server. So we've got client one, client two, and client three. These are separate physical servers, and the way that I've configured them is that I've given them VLAN interfaces. So on client one, we've got VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, client two, 10 and 20, and client three, we've just got a, an interface in VLAN 20. And that's so that they can act as nodes to provide MAC addresses and be the source and destination in various layer two domains for us as we build up the overlays. Now we're going to start with static VXLAN so that the clients can ping each other in the various layer two domains. So this client over here on client 172.16.10.101 will be able to ping 102 and all of the clients in VLAN 20, 172.16.20 slash 24, 101, 102 and 103, they're all going to be able to ping each other. And then why I start with static VXLAN is I like to build up that configuration, then strip out the static part and replace that with a dynamic control plane, that's where the eVPN comes in. So that's where we build our BGP and we start sending our different route types, etc. And with eVPN, we will, first of all, start off with some layer two VNI. So just stretching our VLANs across the underlay. And then we'll go for some layer three VNI examples for some inter subnet routing. And what, what we'll have there is that clients in the 172.16.10 network will be able to ping clients in 172.16.20. So we'll do traffic flows from client one to client three over here. The configuration on the 6300s at the moment is pretty minimal. So I'm going to configure this layer two, layer three, then the OSPF and the loopbacks. Once we've got all of that configured, we'll be configuring the static VXN. And then as I say, we'll move on to the eVPN. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive into the configuration. As I configure, I've tried to maximize the screen real estate. So the main device I'm configuring, I'll have over on the left here, a secondary one on the right, and I'll keep this network diagram up so you can follow along, but also to remind me, because there's quite a bit to configure. And because there's a lot to configure, all I'm going to do is configure the underlay on dash one. Dash two and dash three are already configured with the underlay VLANs, the IP addresses, and the OSPF, the loopback, etc., and the client side. Okay, so this is already configured on dash two, so you can see that there, and dash three, and I'll just configure dash one so that you can see it in action, but you don't have to watch me doing lots of the same stuff. Right, so let's show you the show version to start with 10.10.1000 that's the latest version of code which is running on all of the 6300s and on this device 
as you can see, there's not much configured. Right, so let's configure an underlay. Right, to start with, I'm going to go loop back zero, IP address one slash 32 OSPF. I want the router ID and area at zero. And then go back to the loop back. Put that into OSPF. I also need those VLANs. So for dash one, it's 2010 and 2011. And I need to configure the IP addresses for those IP address where it's the slash 31 slash 31 and OSPF one area zero and the OSPF networks. I like to use point to point. Then what one is it? So 11 to the area and the point to point. Okay, let's save that. Oh, and the physical interface needs to be configured. So that's one slash one slash 10, VLAN trunk allowed, and it's 2010 and 2011. Okay, show OP OSPF neighbor. Right, we've got our neighbors up there. Dash two, show OSPF neighbor. As you can see, I've already configured between these two, okay, as I, as I mentioned. So that so that's up in the routing table, right, we've got the loopbacks. So that's the all important loopbacks, which are the source and destination for the VXLAN traffic. As you can see, we've got that via this link and via that link. Okay, that all looks good to me. And now I need the customer side actually. So it's VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and they needed to be added to the physical port, which is 20 there. I'll make that a trunk as well, allow 10 and 20. Now I don't need a layer three interface for those because this is just bridging. I'm just doing layer two for the static VXLAN and for the EVPN L2 VNI. I won't need a layer three interface in those customer side networks until I'm doing the L3 VNI stuff towards the end. Now, let's start with dash one. We'll start with a static VXLAN. So for this, what we need to do is we need to configure a VXLAN interface, okay? And under there, we need to configure a source. Then we do the binding between the VLANs and the VNI. And you also have to do a no shut. You have to, you have to bring it up. Okay, so source is going to be, if you remember, the source is just IPv4. So that always catches me out because I think I, I just want to dump an IP address in this. But it's source IP and then it is our loopback address, which is 0 0.1 on here. We'll do a no shut. And this is where we need to do the binding then. So we need to create the uh, VNI number. This is what the traffic is going to be encapsulated in the VXLAN header, we're going to have an ID that keeps it separate and keeps that binding between the external VLAN and the keeps the traffic separate as it flows across here. Okay, just focusing on the config though, rather than the explanations for now, what we do, we go VNI, okay, and I will add 1000 to um, the number of the VLAN, okay? So we'll add that in, and that goes into a sub VNI configuration. And at this point, this is where we do the binding for the VLAN. So our VLAN 10 is bound to. So to, what this means is that traffic coming in on VLAN 10 that needs to go across the VXLAN network will be encapsulated with VNI 1010 as it flows across the network. Okay, so we bind that. And we have to, because this is static, we have to put in the peers. So the peers for this are going to be it's the loopbacks. So for VLAN 10, we just add in a single VTemp peer, which is dot two over here, because client three over here only sits within VLAN 20. Okay, so for VLAN 10, we have the single peer. Now let's do the same thing with, uh, what is gonna be, let's come, no, it'll be VNI 
1020, the VLAN is 20, and the VTEMP peers are 192.168.2 and .3. Okay, right. Let's have a look at that then. Here we are. So we've got the VXLAN interface, we've got the source, we've done the no shut, we've got the binding between the VNI 1010 and VLAN 10 with a single VTEMP peer and the VNI 1020, VLAN 20 with the two VTEMP peers. Right, over to 6300-2 then. So it's interface VX, VXLAN 1, source IP address 0.2. Ah, uh, this always gets me. IP, okay. Uh, no shut. VNI is going to be this one, VLAN 10, and then the VTEMP peer is 192.168.0.1, and the VNI 1020, it's VLAN 20, and the VTEMP peer is going to be dot one and dot three. Show run. How are we looking? That's off to the customer side. That's the customer side there. Then we go down. Okay, we've got point to point OSPF. Good, good, good. And here is our, mm -hmm. sorry, there it is, right. So there's our VXLAN configuration. Save that. Okay, and now, of course, we've got to do, let's do Dot three. We don't need to to configure the first VNI, of course, because that's just between one and two. But what I'll do is I'll make sure that they're all kind of aligned at this point. So we'll go VXLAN one source IP. Yay! I got it right for the first time ever. No shut VNI. This is going to be this one, and the VLAN is twenty, and the VTEMPs peers are going to be both dot one and dot two. Okay. Yes. Show run. Okay, that looks good. We've got no shut on there. Got my two interfaces. OSPF will run it, of course. And customer side is 20. Yep, and the internal is 11 and 12. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, um, now let's come up of here and jump onto one of the clients because at this stage, we should start to be able, we need to, essentially we need, let's jump on here actually, we need to uh, generate some traffic, okay? So I'm going to jump on to, what's the IP, right, so client one. Here I am on client one, I'll show you the IP address and what I have here, this is the management, so Ethernet one is the management, we know, don't need to worry about that. So Ethernet zero, that is the one that's physically connected to the 6300. And what I've done is I've configured two VLAN interfaces, as I said, okay, so VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and I've given those IP addresses, so VLAN 10, 172.16.10.101 24, that's this, Sorry, it's that one, isn't it? <laughs> of course. So it's that IP address and then 20, the third octet is 20, okay? And that's that IP address. And these are the devices that we're going to ping. So we're going to ping from 101 over to 102. Now, if I, sometimes you get some traffic flowing beforehand. I just want to close or clear off the table so I can show you, make it a bit more controlled, hopefully. So this is the MAC address table, the layer two table for dash one. At the moment, we just have MAC addresses learn on these VLANs, so VLAN 2010 and 2011. Let's see if we've got any residual traffic. No, no, nothing's flowing at the moment. Now, if I bounce this interface, which is, so that's 20, isn't it? Shut, no shut. Let's have a look if that forces the clients to generate some traffic. No, it hasn't done. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. No, so what we're going to do is I will start sending some traffic. Let's do a ping and we'll see if we can actually ping our neighbor. So 101 is us. Let's go for, let's see if we do a broadcast, what that does. Is that actually going to generate some traffic over here? Oh, it does. Okay, great. Right. So that has been picked up. 
Right, so this is the local MAC address of our client one. You can see that there. They do have the same MAC address in the different VLANs ending in 09. That's this MAC address here that's learned on that local VLAN, okay? Because VXLAN repurposes the layer two bridging table because it is essentially just switching, right? But we're not going deep in the explanation in this video. We're focusing more on the configuration and just some of the show commands. So we can see this client on this port here. There's one slash one slash 20. That's that port there, okay? Now, uh, yeah, right. Now what we want to do, let's see if we can do a ping over to 102 can we do and we can okay brilliant so we are actually pinging across the vxlan across the uh core there okay over to our neighbor so if we check the table now we can see this is the locally learnt address and there's the remote address which has been learned across from it's VLAN 10, but it's not a local port that we've learned it on. It's the VXLAN interface, and that is the VTemp IP address. So that's the source address of, of course, it's the loopback of dash two that we've learned it from. So that's where the traffic's come from, okay? Let's split this actually so that we can jump over to, yep, yeah, dot, let's go over to, to dash two as well, and I'll show you the, bridge table, MAC address table there. There we are. What we've got is locally learned, the ports that are locally learned, and then we've got the remote learned ones as well. And actually, dash two's already learned something from dot three. What we've got is we've learned this MAC address on VLAN 10 from dot one. We've learned the, this MAC address. Remember, it's the same MAC address across the different VLANs. I don't see that as an issue. Is is zero, sorry, zero nine, on VLAN 10, 09 on VLAN 20, being learned from 192.168.0.1 and dot one here. But also we've heard from client three, which is hanging off in its VLAN 20. So it's that layer two domain for VLAN 20. So let's try to, let's try to ping over there as well. Now we won't, we need to change the third octet. So let's ping 102. So for what, what I'm doing is I'm sat here no, sorry, I'm sat here and I'm going to ping uh, this device here and this device here. So fingers crossed this all works. And three, yeah, okay. So we can ping across our VXLAN network. If we log into, let's go to client three. I haven't jumped onto that one for all. Okay, so this is client three. It's called UB3, but uh, you know, it's client three. It's this device down here. Now let's do some pings and it will be 172.16.20.103 is itself. One oh two, yep, to client two, and then one oh one to client one. Okay, great. So we can see like if we log into, let's have a look at dash one set. So we should see traffic from on VLAN 20 from dot three, if we do a show MAC address table now, and there we are, that's the entry there, okay? So this is the MAC address. I can show you the MAC address on client three. If I do this link, you'll see it there, okay? 2C59 ends in 9001. 2C59 ends in 9001. Okay, so that is us learning about client three from the point of view of dash one here, learning from this VTEM.3. Right, static VXLAN. Right, okay, so we've done that a few times. Uh, I've configured videos for it. So we're going to move on now, strip off the static VTEM peer commands, and build up some EVPN. Right, I'll come off of here. So this is EVPN layer two VNI, which essentially emulates the static VXLAN, but using BGP, it's using the EVPN control plane rather than using the flood and learn where we have to wait for traffic to flow before we can populate our L2 tables. Let's come out of there. I'll go on to two. Right, so the first, as I mentioned, the first thing that we want to do is sort out that 
VXLAN interface. So uh, it's VNI on 10, and we take out the VTEMP here. Okay, so we've taken out the VTEMP here. We still need that binding. So it, with eVPN configuration, you still see the VXLAN interface on there with the binding, because that's still required. But now we use the dynamic control plane. Okay, so that's dash one. Let's do the same on dash two. You know, what is it? Um, now we need to do dash three as well. Let's do dash three. So this is just the tidy up of the VXLAN. Where is it? Okay. It's phase VXLAN and we just have the single VNI there. So it is VTEMP .1 and .2. Okay. Okay, good. Right, uh, I'll come out there, jump over to two, start from there. Okay, what we need to do then is we need to build up, because eVPN is an extension of BGP, and we need to build up BGP first, and then the, and then activate the eVPN address family. So uh, this is going to be all iBGP. So it's gonna be AS65001 that I'm configuring all of the vTEMPs in. Right, so router BGP five zero one is it BGP? Yep. Router ID is the loopback. Okay, so what we want is we want our neighbour, and that is going to be dot ten and remote AS sixty five zero zero one because it's uh, iBGP. And we need to do the date source, yeah, because we're using the loopback as the source. Okay, so though dot two date source hello zero. Okay, so we've got the neighbors configured there, and we need to go to the address family, which is L2 VPN EVPN. We turn on the neighbors there, which is one, two, one, six, eight, zero, dot two. We need to activate. We also need to send an extended community. I'll send both. Let's do that. Okay. It's still in the layer two VPN, EVPN. I need to do, we've done dot two, now we do dot three. Get rid of that, okay, and dot three. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so we've got the AS, we've got the router ID, we have the uh, neighbor statements, which is the remote AS there, and the loop back as the source. Same again for dot three, and then we've turned on the eVPN address family activated dot two and dot three there, and we have to send this community. Okay, now I need to jump over to two and do the same. It's BGP route one two one six eight zero dot two. Uh, the neighbor two sixteen zero dot one, and it's remote AS yeah, six five zero zero one. And this is going to be three and one. 
update source loop back zero and then three uh, address family l2 vpn evpn neighbor one two one six eight zero dot one activate and send community both now this is three send community both okay right, there we are okay um, i think that looks good let us show bgp l2 evpn summary okay so dot two this is what we're looking for we're looking for established that's already up then let's exit out of here go to three so we're going to this vtemp down here so bgp one of course Neighbor two one six eight zero dot one remote AS is one and this is going to be two. No, come on, remote one and we want to do the update source LO zero. It's two. Okay, we need to do one address family uh, L2. EVPN neighbor one two one six eight zero dot one activate send ooh send community both we want okay so the other one is dot two and we will send the community both to that show BGP LT VPN, and then we'll do the summary command. Okay, we've both got both established. Right, so if we look over here, dash one, and of course over on dash two, it's going to be established as well. So our EVPN is up, let's save that. Right, uh, so show, and it will be BGP e, layer two VPN EVPN. Without the summary, that shows you the table, which where well, there's nothing in there at the moment. And what do we want? Neighbors, okay. So let's have a look at neighbors. You can see here, this gives you a lot of information. So there's two there. So there's a lot of information about the neighbors there and you can see the address family turned on there and get, you've got the send community both going on. Yeah, there's, dot, there's three there as well. So we've got two and three. We have plenty of information about our established BGP layer two evpn sorry l2 vpn evpn um setup okay now we don't have anything configured for evpn yet again this is an l2 vni so we don't have to configure any layer three at the moment what we do need to do is we just turn on the evpn configuration so we can do evpn and under there, we add the VLAN. This is essentially like turning on EVPN and then saying, which VLAN are we interested in? So on uh, on dash one, this one, we're interested in 10 and 20. So this is like saying record MAC addresses on those VLANs. So VLAN 10, and we go into VLAN 10 and we need a root distinguisher. These are just auto, okay? and then the root target we can do both and we'll just go auto for that if you look at what i've configured there so this is just for 10 at the moment we'll do 20 in a moment so what we've got is we've turned on evpn so this client side uh network this l2 VLAN 10, we've got a root distinguisher and a root target. So these are all just set as auto. This is essentially how the updates at a control plane. So you have a VNI at the data plane level to keep the traffic separate, but how do we know which updates in the control plane need to go within which table? Well, it's with the root distinguisher, which keeps the root itself, like the MAC address, it keeps it 
unique across the multiple VPNs. And we have a root target, which are essentially like how which updates in the control plane need to be added into which VPN, okay? Um, but for this, for these purposes, I'm not going deep in the explanation. For these purposes, we can just set all of this to auto and then the device will use its automatic process to add the specific details, which we'll be able to have a look at, okay? Now we need to do the same for VLAN 20. Okay, so we'll come out of here and we go VLAN 20. So it's RD auto, it's root target both auto. Okay, and what's that done to our eVPN table? Okay, right, yes, it's added in a couple of updates into, into, into Dash 1's BGP eVPN table. Now, I won't go into that right now. Let's go and configure the other devices for the eVPN. So I'm on Dash 3. Dash 3 is VLAN 20, oh, no, come on, eVPN. VLAN, it's in VLAN 20, it's RD auto, it's root target both auto. Save that, completely off of that device actually, and we'll go over to dash two and configure. Okay, so EVPN, v, I always want to put the VLAN straight afterwards, but root target both auto. VLAN 20, RD, auto, root target, both auto. And I will save that. So let's jump over to dash one and have a look at the eVPN table, okay? Now, when I do a workshop, um, what I try to do is I try to stop people grimacing when they look at the eVPN table, because it's, you know, it's pretty ugly thing, but it's lovable. OK, um, now it's uh, on, on first glance. I mean, there's hardly anything in there at the moment, but when you'd see one and it's even like on a basic example like we're doing here, it can be pr pretty um, heavy going, let's say. OK, now the whole principle behind it is that it is a BGP table with extras and those extras come from the workings of eVPN. So we've got the different root types. OK, so because eVPN isn't sending, isn't just sending things like a standard IPv4 unicast prefix update. It's sending information about, in the control plane, it's sending information about the destination MAC addresses, which it sends in the root type two. Um, there's also uh, the IP address can also be in the root type two. There is information about IP prefixes. If you're doing layer three, that's your root type five. And then we've got the root type three that we see here, right? So um, that's a bit of a ramble. Now, I'm not going deep into this right now, but essentially Aruba supports root types two, three, and five, okay, for our setup. Now, when I'm trying to teach this, how I start with is because if you don't have any customer traffic, but you set up the network for the VTEMPs to interact with each other, what you'll start to see is you'll start to see root type threes. And that's what we can see here. Now, root type three is essentially the way that the VTEMPs tell each other which VNIs they're configured with, okay? Which VNIs are they interested in? So if you, what they're saying to each other is, if you have traffic for this VNI, send it to me. Because remember, we've taken out those VTEMP peer configurations from the static. So how does a local device, how does the local VTEMP know which VNIs that the remote VTEMPs are in? Well, they know via this auto discovery and that's by sending a root type three, which is what you can see here. So let's just focus on one, let's go for one of the uh, L2 VNIs, right? So VNI, the one that's only got the dash one and dash two. So I'm looking at VNI, 1010 at the moment. And what you can see here, if you know BGP, you're part of the way there, okay? Because it's essentially, like I said, a BGP table with some extras, right? So what we have here, this is the locally injected one. Because we are configured with VNI, and this is coming off of, if you remember, it's from the VXLAN configuration. We're configured with a binding for with uh, VLAN 10, so a la layer two on the customer side, bound to a VNI, and that's in our, I'll show you over this side actually. 
So it's essentially this, I know this is dash two, but it's, it's mirrored over on dash one. So it's essentially this configuration here. So we have this VNI turned on and we've got it bound to a customer side VLAN, right? That generates these RT3s within the eVPN table for this VNI. So we've got that VNI there, and we're, we're essentially saying we are a part of this. So this root type three has got the vTemp's IP address, okay? Now the update that we see here, because this is local, the next top, this is dot one, this is dot one here, right? This is, this is dash one, this is dot one. So this is the locally generated RT3 that we advertise out, out towards dash two. Now dash two is telling us which VNIs it's configured for. I'm, I've drilled into VNI 1010, so we're just focusing on that one at the moment. But we do see an update from dot two for that VNI. So what it is, it's a, it's a three and it's saying, I'm in this VNI. Send if you've got some traffic that needs to be flooded to this VNI, keep me in mind. Send it to me. This is my next hop. Okay. Now you can expand expand upon that. Uh, no. Okay. What we'll do is we'll look specifically because this yeah this can be kind of um, tricky to start with how to drill in and have a look at them further. So what you need to do is you need to do the root distinguisher, which is this. So we're going to look deeper into this update we copy that then you need to do a dash so a dash there and then we put this if you put the entry in there now it's telling you all of this like you, this is the uh, root type 3 there so you have to put the root type the ethernet tag and the originating IP address it's essentially that just copy that and place that in there right let's go to the top and do that again these so that's if you want to drill in and look at this further we can see the next top is dash two it's internal because it's in the same as um, and the vni type is a layer two vni and you can see the extended community so this has been added onto um, the update via that auto command if you remember where was it i'll show you over this side so the evpn and this is, yeah, so, so it's coming, the root target that's been exported was automatically generated. That's it, automatically generated. It's an extended community that gets sent. Um, and the other thing, what was it? The root distinguisher. The, so the root distinguisher here is the loopback plus the VLAN um, that it's, so you see that the root distinguisher is auto. What it does, is it takes the loopback, so the, the VTemp IP address, so that source IP address and adds the VLAN to it, as you can see there. Okay, so that's the root distinguisher and that's the actual root. So it's a root type three. Uh, we don't have the tag there, but we have the source VTEM IP address. Okay, um, I know there's a lot in here and I'm not doing um, theory too much, but essentially that's what you can see in this update. And uh, so if we look at the different, we've got the different VNIs there. And of course, so these two, dash one and dash two, they participate in that VNI 1010 because they've got the L2 for 10 and 10 over here. But all of them, dash one, dash two and dash three, they participate in the VNI uh, 1020. And that's why you can see if we look at VLAN 1020 here, here and here, we don't just get our local update from dash one, we've also got from dash two, and from dash three, right? So our neighbors, we can see the I because it's IBGP, our neighbors have said to us, this is the V, the VNI, like essentially the VPN that I am interested in receiving traffic from, okay? So at the moment, we don't have any MAC addresses in any of this, we haven't pinged or anything like that, but we do have these RT3s. So how would we know about source MAC addresses, right? How do how's the traffic going to flow from one client here, so 101 to 102? What we need is the RT2. That's how we carry the MAC addresses, right? I'm going to jump over to our client. So it's dot 93. Now I'm on the client. Okay, ping 72.16.10.101. So this is local. Let me bounce that interface actually. Uh, call so shut. No shut. So Mac address table. Oh, we haven't got anything local from our client. Oh, we do. Now we've got. I oh, now we do. Now we've got. Now we're learning some um, 
MAC addresses. Okay, so those MAC addresses, you can see them in the local MAC table. We should be able to see them in the local eVPN table, which does the MAC. Okay, yeah, so we can see them. We can see these locally learnt addresses. So this is, this is this client here being learnt from, because we've received some traffic. So dash one has recorded the source MAC addresses of the traffic that was learnt, right? So it's local learning. With eVPN, local learning is the same as layer two learning, right? It's the remote learning that comes from the, um, come to the from the control plane so it doesn't come from the flood and learn right but what that does mean is because we've learned some uh some source max on our customer side we should have so now we have entries into our evpn table remember i said evpn essentially turns on um for it's it, it says okay 6300 these are the vlans that you should record source max on for evpn and what that also means then is that they get, yeah, okay, great. So they get injected into the BGP table. Now, if we look at the BGP table, so we'll just look at um, VNI 20, sorry, 1010, you'll see we've got the MAC address, right? So that that's the, that's not flood and learn like static VXLAN. Okay, so what we have here is we have a root type two. So this is the workhorse of eVPN where we're learning the source MAC addresses, putting them into our eVPN table and we will advertise those out to our neighbors, right? So we're not doing flood and learn, we're learning via the BGP table. As you can see that MAC address, you should recognize that, that is, is this one here, okay? So it's 0109. That's the MAC address that we've learned. If we look at VNI um, 1020, you also see that there as well, okay? So what we do, this is like a, an update for a MAC address, which we need to advertise to our peers. So let me how do I split the screen. There we go, split the screen and let's go over. So we should have an update on dash two for this. All right, show BGP E. VPN, L2, EVPN. Let's go to the VNI. Yeah, okay, that's it, right. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking, doing all of this on the fly. So essentially, there's our update, right? So, dash one, it's locally learned. It's in the MAC address table, okay? It gets, this MAC address is placed into, it is learned like L2, but because we also have EVPN turned on, on that VLAN 10, then we add that to our eVPN table against this VNI here, and we generate RT2s with it. Okay, so that is this is the local one. Because see, this it, the next hop is dot one. This is this is dot one here. So this is the one we're injecting. So dash one is injecting into BGP and then on the other side we can see the next hop stop one so this is the learnt address this is coming from dot one so now we know about that MAC address right so what does dash two do so dash two will now add that so it takes the RT2 it adds it into its eVPN table but the next hop being dot one and finally if you look at the MAC address table, you can see that we've learnt that MAC address there. So it's this update that's being sent that goes into the BGP table, the eVPN table, and the L2 table for Dash 2, okay? So, you know, that looks very similar to <laughs> the VXLAN, but you can see that the type, the way that it's been learned is via eVPN. So essentially, if we've got traffic on Dash 2, if it's coming off of here, and we want it to go to that destination MAC address, then we send it to our VTEMP peer here, which is, you know, our BGP eVPN uh, peer dot one. That's where we will send it rather than flooding. Okay, so we're using the eVPN control plane rather than the flood and learn of VXLAN. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, I'm hoping it means that we, and we can, we can ping. So using the eVPN control plane, using the VXLAN um, data plane, we can go from 101 over to 102, right? So we've, we've got that set up. And what that means also is that if we look at, no, which one do I want? VNI, just this one, 
we will see, yeah, a remote entry, okay? So the remote entry dash two's MAC address has now been updated. So we've that's the locally learned one. That's the remote learned. That's the traffic flow, okay? That's the source of our ICMP echo request. And that's the ICMP echo reply is coming from there, right? So because the, this is from dash two's point of view. So over on here, we'll have essentially the mirror of that. Yeah, okay. That's our local, that's our remote, okay? And it's using the BGP eVPN as the control plane and they're in the table. We do that again, BGP. There we are, that's our locally learnt. You can tell there's no I next to it and it's from dot one, so that's the locally injected. And this is the remotely learnt update. So it's an RT2, a root type two that we've learned from dot two um, and it's IBGP, okay? And that's what's allowing us to do this ping. Now the other one, uh, have, let's have a look at our setup for 20. We should be able to, okay, so we don't have anything for 20. I'll go 172.10, uh, so it's the third octet is 10. So I, um, I'm essentially pinging again across here, but it's a different VNI. Right, that's working. Now we should, so the pings are flowing. Now let's have a look at the table, what that's done to the table. And there we've got entries now. Whereas we only had the RT3s, now we've got RT3, now we've got RT2, sorry. So we've got the local and we've got the remote. Now the other one, of course, is to be able to ping down to three. Yep, and that's working as well. So that means that again, we should have an update and we do, so now we've got RT2s from dot three as well, because we've learned. So it, the, the process is that we learn locally, we create the, uh, we inject the update into the BGP table, we advertise that, then the devices learn about that via BGP eVPN, and they add that into the L2 tables. So we look at the L2 table, yeah, you've got the destination for two, this is 20, so it's, two and three there that we've heard from, okay? Right, so that is, no, I've got one more, haven't I? Uh, where, really, I should finish this off. Uh, let's have, really, I should finish this off by jumping on to between two and three. So let's do that. Okay, now, I'm on client two, let's ping from client two, 172.16, the one that we haven't done, which would be 20.103. Okay, there we go. And now if we look over here, we should have an entry from 192.168.0.3 for the MAC address that sits uh, what for client three. Which which one will it be? They'd be 90.1. Let's have a look. There you go. 90.01. Okay, so that is eVPN L2 VNI. So we're stretching our L2 across. So these uh, layer two, domains switched across a layer, sorry, stretched across a layer three core, this underlay, we're using VXLAN for the encapsulation and we're using BGP eVPN for the control plane. And the next step is to go and introduce some layer three here.